screen. I'm going to do the things well. Uh, I'm going to pass it because Erika, I think that wasn't here. So uh, this is what we were doing the other day. Ah, oh, well, it is there, but I'm going to pass it again. Just for uh, Erika and uh, uh, um. OK, so we saw this PowerPoint. Now you should be able to see my screen. We saw this PowerPoint. Uh, we saw the passive voice. Why? Why do we use it? Uh, OK, um, we use the passive voice when the object is more important and it acquires more prominence in the sentence. Then we saw uh, several uh, steps to change a sentence from the active voice to the passive voice. So we saw the steps and the step is the step one was uh, mainly you put the, um, the object as the subject of the sentence. OK, in the first position, el pinta el cuadro. He paints the picture. El, el cuadro es pintado por él. OK, so you put the picture at the beginning, OK, because it acquires more prominence. And step two, you have to conjugate the verb to be. Conjugáis el verbo to be en el tiempo que sea. Have been, will be, has been, OK, whatever. Y lo que siempre está en las frases es el participio, OK? Painted in this case, so the participle is the third column of the verbs or ed in regular verbs. So, ponemos el objeto al principio para que haga de sujeto. Step two, conjugamos el verbo to be. Este puede ser el paso más eh, difícil si no nos sabemos bien las conjugaciones. Conjugamos el to be en el tiempo que sea, ¿vale? I am, es decir, I am... Just that. I am, or I will be, or I, it has been, whatever. Y luego, en todas el participio, ¿ok? En este caso, paint, paint it. Just that. Then we had an additional step, which is the, the agent, which is not always necessary, ¿ok? For example, when we say somebody, they, he, she, it is not necessary to put this, but it is introduced by the preposition by, by. Este cuadro fue pintado por eh, Nicolás. Por Nicolás, eso es el complemento agente. Ese por no es for, es by. Ok, this is important. And then we saw the different eh, changes. And then you have here um, like a box. Ok. And well, with the different changes. So you have to, you have to make it clear. For example, I make a cake. ¿Cómo lo pongo? A cake. Pongo primero el objeto, pasa a ser el sujeto. Make. Tengo que saber que es presente simple. Hasta ahí tengo que llegar. Pongo el verbo to be, lo conjugo entonces. ¿En qué, en qué tiempo? Presente simple. Is. Y luego pongo el participio del verbo. Vamos a ver otro. El past perfect de aquí. Pues otro. Step one. The object is the subject. ¿Ok? At the beginning, had made is past perfect. So I have to put to be in the past perfect. Had been y luego made. Es decir, I had made a cake. Yo había hecho una tarta. Una tarta había sido hecha. Ok. So, eh, sido, eh, lo que acaba en ido, ado, edo, es participio. Pues como en inglés tenemos, tenemos un, en español tenemos había sido, había es auxiliar en español del verbo haber y sido es participio. En inglés es que pasa lo mismo, había sido y luego otro participio, hecha. Ok, so you have to see the, esto lo tenéis en la tabla de equivalencias, ese documento que os pasé tan interesante. No, this is a joke, <laughs> it is not interesting, but it is useful. Eh, important, pay attention to the number. They are eating an apple. An apple is being eaten. Okay, so be careful when conjugating. Be careful. And we said that it was very common in expressions regarding I was born and these things. And another fact is that some sentences have 
uh, double objects, okay? So, for example, Mary gives Tom a book. Mary da un, un libro a Tom, okay? Y hay dos formas de hacerla. O a book is given to Tom, o Tom is given a book, which is more common than the passive one, okay? Uh, we, we, we are going to practice this, so don't worry. Okay, so you have the PowerPoint. Uh, we started to, uh, to do some exercises. If you have doubts, uh, you can read this. I don't know if you have or not, but well, this is useful in any case if you have doubts. Of course, if you already know the theory and if you already know everything, uh, it's not necessary. It's not necessary to read it. But if you have doubts, you have here every uh, single thing explained in Spanish, okay, which is good. So the structure, blah, 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 how to pass uh, a sentence from the active to passive, all of these. And the other day we started with exercise one. We were doing a little bit of this, okay. I think we, we finished at six. And... Now we're going to do um, we're going to do seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, and I'm going to give you just uh, two minutes. Well, not two, uh, maybe four, <laughs> four minutes uh, to do this to convert this. Okay, so I, I'm going to give you some time.
leche y... A ver, no sé si ahora estoy dejando... Uh, when we have somebody, it is not necessary to put the agent, so it is not necessary to put by, okay? If somebody speaks English here, uh, English is spoken... Let me see. Wait a minute, please, please, please. I'm going to do it like that. English is, is spoken here. Uh, guys, when we have when we have um, English, French, when we have uh, the names, the proper nouns of uh, languages, we have to put them in capital letters, okay? Always. Somebody loves the London parks. The London, the London parks are loved. Why? Because I need... Uh, guys, I need to conjugate it well. R because it is parks, the subject. So uh, no longer no longer present simple in the third person. Now it is like they are they are loved. Okay. Somebody wants a staff. A staff is personal. A staff is wanted. Okay. Staff is wanted. Somebody write articles articles are written okay so be careful that that is why i told you about uh, be careful with the conjugation because ah uh, somebody writes articles this is a uh, the third person no no but when you pass it if this if you have an s in here you have to put it in the plural okay articles are written Alguien escribe artículos. Los artículos son escritos. Vale, por alguien. Podríamos poner by somebody, pero normalmente si tengo somebody no pongo el agente. ¿Ok? Good. So now, let's see now. Si en algún momento voy rápido, aparte de que me lo podéis decir, podéis hacer una captura. Se queda en el chat. Now let's convert the sentences uh, in the passive, but now we are going to practice the past. Okay, so we are going to do the first, no, not all of them, uh, the first six, okay? Up until six. Included, six included. This is in the past. Now, just that.
Ok, let's see this one. This is in the past. Entonces, si os digo en, en, que lo conjuguéis en el pasado o en el futuro, ¿qué es lo que tiene que ir en el pasado o en el futuro? El verbo to be. Ok. So you have the example. Somebody lost the letter. The letter was lost. Alguien perdió la carta. La carta se perdió. No se traduce como fue perdida. Utilizamos el C. Ok. Eso lo, está en el point. Aquí, lo del C. ¿Vale? So, uh, somebody found the key. The key was found. Okay. Somebody makes, uh, sorry, uh, somebody made mistakes. Mistakes were made. Okay. I'm putting the object in the subject place, in the subject position, then I put in the past the verb to be and always the participle. El participio da igual. Eh, ponemos el participio, eh, lo conjuguemos en presente, en futuro, en lo que sea. Okay. Four, somebody loved that woman. That woman was loved. Somebody cleaned the rooms. The rooms, ahora lo tengo que poner en, en plural. The rooms were cleaned. Las habitaciones fueron limpiadas. Y claro, diré, pero es que esto, cuando digo eso, las habitaciones fueron limpiadas. Vale, pero es que en inglés suena bien. En español suena que nadie dice eso. Que se entiende, pero en inglés en la pasiva se está utilizando todo el rato. Incluso es más común decir the rooms were cleaned antes que somebody cleaned the rooms. And the last one of this exercise is somebody fixed the computer. The computer was fixed. Fixed. El ordenador fue reparado o arreglado. Ok. So uh, you put the verb to be in the past. En el examen es más fácil. ¿Por qué? Porque es multiple choice. Entonces, eh, A, B, C o D. Ya está. Pero claro, para que en el examen sea pum, 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 eh, vamos a practicar eh, un modelo de examen el próximo día. Eh, claro, pues mejor saber hacerlo, ¿no? Y ya no por nada, ya no por aprobar el examen o dejar de aprobarlo, sino para aprender inglés. Ok. Eh, we skip this. And now you are going to uh, pass these sentences into passive and those are in the present perfect. Okay, so again, the first, uh, the first seven, these ones, okay? From two to seven included, these ones.
Okay, guys, let's see. Somebody has watered the plants. The plants have been. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? Primero, del be, digo, a ver, ¿cómo se forma en el presente perfecto? Con el have y el participio, ¿vale? Pues con have o has, si pusiera somebody has watered the plant, luego aquí sería has, ¿vale? Have o has, si es singular, y luego el participio del verbo, to, de, en este caso del to be, have been, y luego siempre el participio del verbo. The plants have been watered, las plantas han sido regadas. Ado, edo, ido, participio. Participio y participio, al igual que en español. Somebody has taken the money. The money has been taken by somebody, you could say. Somebody uh, has bought the presents. The presents, now it's plural, have been bought. The presents have been bought. The presents have been bought. Somebody has finished the report. The report has been finished. Y recordad, el has se puede apostrofar. Es decir, puedo decir, the report, the re, a ver, sorry, the report, the report's been finished. Report's been finished. Si veis esto es porque puede ser el is o el has, que es si tengo un participio, el has, ok? The report's been finished, ok? Um, when you practice at home, you can, uh, you can practice reading a sentence aloud, okay, and you can practice this, uh, doing this, okay. For example, instead of saying, the money has been taken, lo, le lo podéis leer en casa para ganar fluidez, to acquire more fluency, okay, the money's been taken, okay. Estas contracciones son, más, eh, son muy, muy, muy comunes. Entonces, en vez de decir I will go, I will go, dicen I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. ¿Ok? Es la única forma de que si lo internalizáis vosotros, luego cuando oigáis I'll go, entendáis que eso es I will. ¿Ok? Lo mismo que, lo mismo que aquí, the report has been finished. Si alguien lo pronuncia así, the report has been finished, soléis entenderlo, pero si dicen the report's been finished, ahí ya es como que, ay, no me he enterado, ¿ok? So, try to practice aloud, try to read, ¿ok? And try to copy an accent. Somebody has killed the president. The president has been killed. The president has been killed. And the last one of these, Somebody has repaired the road. The road has been repaired. That's it. Guys, that's it. Oh, the president's been killed. Okay. Oh, the road's been repaired. La carretera ha sido arreglada. Well, I suppose you don't have this is this is easy because you have to follow some some rules and that, and just that. Let's see. We skip this. Now a little bit of the future. Okay, guys. So The example is somebody will clean the windows, the windows will be cleaned. Now you have to practice these. Okay, and we do just the first, these ones. Uh, up until six. Okay, six included.
let's see this one. Somebody will. Oh, sorry, this is, this is not. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Because in the other exercise, it was the other way around. Well, it doesn't matter. Somebody will meet you at the airport. You will be met at the airport. Uh, you is the object. The object is you. So the subject is you. Okay. You will be met at the airport. In English, it sounds very well. Okay. Somebody will process your application. Your application will be processed by somebody. This was a one was a little bit difficult because the object was you. Okay. Uh, four. Your uh, somebody will find your glasses. Your glasses will be found. Okay. Somebody will bring food. Food will be sorry will be brought brought okay pronounce as like this brought and uh, number six somebody will help you you will be helped tú serás ayudado te ayudarán es lo que diríamos en español okay no doubts with this well, this is following rules, but we are going to practice a little bit more, not with this. Okay. I'm going to show it to you just in case you are copying or something. There you have it. próximo día vamos a, a repasar ya, eh, o sea, vamos a hacer eh, un, no un simulacro de examen entero, pero sí cosas que han caído en, en exámenes. Un reading o algo así, algo diferente. Es que teníamos que ver la pasiva. We skip this. Bye. I want someone to love me. I want to be loved. No, uh, we're not going to do this one. This is uh, to pass, uh, this is to make subordinates. You have the theory, okay? You have it in the theory. So now this is what we are going to do. I'm going to give you some minutes and we're going to do the first 10, las primeras diez, the first 10. No, the, the first 11, because I'm going to do the first one. Okay, so I want you to do 10. One of the cleaners has found my purse. Estas todas están en activa, okay? Tengo que ver lo que es el sujeto, lo que es el verbo, lo que es el objeto, vale? Entonces yo digo, one of the cleaners has found my purse. Where is the verb? The verb is find, but this is all the verb, okay? So I put, I'm going to put it in one color. Okay, uh, let's put this, the verb. Okay, this is in the active. ¿Por qué sé que es en activa? Porque no está el verbo to be y luego un participio. O sea, un participio, pero con has, entonces es present perfect, normal. Which is the subject? One of the cleaners. This is the subject. Okay, subject. Uno de los limpiadores o limpiadoras ha encontrado mi bolso. Mi bolso es el objeto. My purse is the object. Okay. One of the cleaners has found my purse. So what do you have to do? My purse, you're going to reverse like the, um, the object is going to be the, the, the subject. And now, what is this? 
present perfect. So now you have to put present perfect in the passive. OK, my purse has been found. And now this is important by one of the cleaners. Cuando pongo el by, cuando es importante, si digo alguien, como si pones somebody, no lo no pongáis el, el agente, ¿vale? O cuando eh, pone we, tampoco, ¿vale? No es que esté mal, pero suena redundante o sin sentido. Por ejemplo, pues encontraron las llaves, por ejemplo. No digo alguien encontró las llaves. Solo diría alguien encontró las llaves si estoy remarcando ese alguien. En valorarlo vosotros, ¿ok? If you put by, if you put the agent or not. So, my purse now is the subject, has been found is the verb, ¿ok? The, the, lexical, the lexical meaning. And by one of the cleaners is the agent, ¿ok? Who has done the action? One of the cleaners. One of the cleaners has found my purse. Uno de los limpiadores o limpiadoras ha encontrado mi bolso. Mi bolso ha sido encontrado por uno de... ¿Ok? So, you're going to do up until 11. ¿Ok? So, 11 included. And in here, guys, uh, this is a mix of sentences. ¿Ok? So, uh, you have to, to outweigh which... Um, which tense is, okay? It is present, it is future, you have to know it. So, uh, let's start with this. And then I'm going to scroll down. Uh, I'm going to show you this just in case you want to focus on this. Tenéis el, el documento vosotros en el chat, okay? Si queréis mirar esto.
let's just start, okay? Um, if you haven't finished, don't worry because we are going to do it together, so it doesn't matter. Okay, I know this is a little bit difficult because this is a mix, you have to think, but in the exam is going to be easier. Mejor que cuando lleguéis al examen digáis, ah, pues no era para tanto el examen. Antes que sea al revés, ay madre mía, está pasiva esto que es. Okay, we have the verb which is hit, uh, the robber is the subject, hit him is uh, the object on the head with a hammer. Okay, so those are complements. So he, why he, guys? Because when we put the object, we saw it that after a verb, if we need a pronoun, we have to put the object. But now the object is a personal pronoun, so he, okay? Because it's the subject. We cannot put him and then a verb, okay? He was hit, he was hit, el fue golpeado, okay? He was hit, uh, and you can have two alternatives. You can put by the robber on the head with a hammer, or he was hit, I prefer, on the head with a hammer by the robber. Okay, he was hit. Okay, the robber hit him, he was hit by the robber. Okay. Three, the government has built a new road in this area. So has built is our verb in the present perfect. A new road in this area has been built by the government. Okay, so all of this is the complement, all of these. So this is a chunk, es un bloque. Okay, this is a chunk and we put it in the first place. A new road in this area has been built by the government. El gobierno ha construido una nueva carretera en, este, en esta zona. Una nueva carretera en esta zona ha sido construida por el gobierno. This is what we are doing, okay? En el examen, ¿qué, qué saldrá? Has been built, bueno, puede que no entre la pasiva, ¿eh? Pero claro, son 25 preguntas de gramática, pues puede que, lo que dije el otro día, puede que entre en cinco, eh, una o ninguna. We have to know all, all of this, all the grammar, because you want the B2, the highest, you want the highest mark. Um, so, in the exam you may have, has been built with, uh, with D, or built, or, or has been building, okay, so you would have something like that. Something different. The assistant handed me a note. To hand something is entregar, eh, dar en mano. I would say entregar, okay? So I, I siempre en mayúscula. I with capital letters always. So I, because this is the object, okay? And then we have another object. So the indirect object is the first. I was handed a note by the assistant. No os preocupéis por esa estructura cuando tenemos dos objetos, veis, tenemos aquí uno, el indirecto, a mí es el indirecto y una nota es el, el directo. Es, no os preocupéis porque tengo un ejercicio solo de eso. Okay. Ahí ponemos el, el pronombre primero. I was handed, ¿por qué es handed? Handed es eh, pasado simple, entonces tengo que poner pasado simple, entonces solo pongo en, en pasado simple el to be, luego siempre pongo el participio, y luego bla 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 by the assistant. I was handed a note by the assistant. <coughs> Sorry. Five. We elected John class representative. John was elected a class representative and you would put it is not necessary but it would be by us ok porque es as porque dijimos que los pronombres objetos se ponen detrás de verbos y detrás de preposiciones no puedo decir by we tengo que decir by us recordad esto John was elected because John is the object Okay, 
we place it in the subject, was elected, porque es el pasado, simple de la pasiva del to be, y luego el participio, y luego no sé, los complementos que vengan en la frase, y puedo poner by as, ¿vale? El sujeto de la activa pasa a ser suje eh, perdón, complemento agente, introducido por la preposición by. Someone has taken my wallet. My wallet has been taken. You could say by someone. It is not necessary, okay? My wallet has been taken. Fijaos, tenemos las, fijaos bien. Tenemos las mismas partes. Controlad muy bien si es pasiva, activa. Mirad. Alguien, a. Es que hasta el a. Es que pare, es, parece en español. Ha cogido mi cartera. Y ahora, mi cartera ha sido cogida, ha sido tomada por alguien. ¿Veis? Alguien ha cogido dos, dos partes del verbo y luego mi cartera ha sido tomada por alguien o lo que sea. Tres, al igual que en español, al igual que la pasiva en español. ¿Ok? Seven. Many people use bicycles as a means of transport. ¿Ok? Means of transport es medio de transporte. Eh, use. Use is present. So, bicycles... Ahora tengo que poner el to be en presente, pero claro, eh, lo tengo que conjugar. Entonces, bicycles are. Eso ya es el presente del to be. Eh, perdón, lo he puesto al revés. ¿Por qué lo pongo en...? Vale, y luego lo... <risas> bicycles. Bicycles es plural, por eso pongo are. Y ahora el, el participio de mi verbo. ¿Cuál es mi verbo? Use. Pues ahora el participio. Tengo que saber si es regular, irregular, ¿ok? Bicycles are used as a means of transport by many people. ¿Ok? Are used. Son usadas. Mucha gente usa las bicicletas. Las bicicletas son usadas. Son, ¿cómo es son? Are. Y usado, ado, es un participio. Es que la pasiva, chicos, si dudáis, la pasiva y a equivalencias de tiempos verbales, eh, si traducís literalmente, funciona. En esto sí que funciona. En expresiones no funciona, en otros casos no funciona, pero en la pasiva, eh, traducir del español al inglés o del inglés al español funciona siempre. Menos cuando hay doble objeto, que ahí suena un poco raro. Eh, for, I mean for, for left, for left. Eh, eight, they advised me to get a visa. I was advised to get a visa. Advised, ¿en qué tiempo lo tengo? Pasado simple, ¿cuál es el pasado simple de be? Pues was aware. ¿Con qué va I? ¿Con was o con where? Con was. Vale, pues ya tengo la primera parte. Ahora, el participio de este, pues da la casualidad de que es el mismo. Y luego ya el resto de la frase. Y los pronombres personales, si los quiero poner en todo caso, eh, ya sabéis, el objeto, es decir, el caso acusativo, el objeto, el pronombre objeto, lo vemos creo que el segundo día de clase o muy al principio. Eh, se pone detrás de preposición y verbo. Let's see. Nine. They were building the old road when I drove by. They were rebuilding. Were rebuilding is um, past continuous. Okay. So the old road, the old road was 
being rebuilt. It was rebuilt. When I, lo dejo igual, igual, when I drove by, y luego el by them no falta. A ver, ¿qué he hecho? Pues a ver, the old road, es el objeto, lo pongo primero, ¿vale? El they, ya hemos dicho que cuando normalmente es they, como aquí, no se pone, aunque si lo pusiera sería by them, el objeto, ¿no? Como aquí. Vale, we're rebuilding. Eh, past continuous. ¿Cuál es el past continuous del verbo to be? Pues was aware be, y luego con ing, ¿no? Entonces, was porque es singular y being porque estaba siendo reconstruido. Ido, participio. ¿Ok? Was being rebuilt. The old road was being rebuilt when I drove by. ¿Sí? Siempre Tenéis que poner, acordaos, to be, conjugado en cualquier tiempo, en cualquier tiempo. Eh, y luego un participio. A ver, por ejemplo, yo veo esta frase y digo, open, ya tengo aquí mi verbo. The local council, sujeto, open, verbo, a new shopping center, objeto. Pues entonces, a new shopping center. El pasado del verbo to be was aware a new shopping center es un nuevo centro comercial es, es singular o plural singular vale was y ahora digo cuál es el participio de opened ah vale que es igual opened vale by the local council aquí sí lo pongo por qué porque me está diciendo que es el, el consejo local entonces puede que sea importante ponerlo ok eh, abrió y aquí es fue abierto. Okay. And the last one for today. They haven't decided anything yet. Eh, anything has been deci decided yet. Eh, ¿Qué he hecho? Haven't decided. Es nuestro tiempo presente, presente perfecto, perdón. They es el sujeto, que no me hace falta cuando pongo they. Anything es el objeto, nada. Y eh, normalmente, chicos, eh, voy a poner el anything en las afirmativas con el has. ¿Vale? Entonces, anything, lo muevo aquí y digo anything. ¿Cuál es el presente perfecto del to be? Has o have y el participio. Pues has been, has porque es singular. Si fuera en plural sería have been y luego el participio. Decided. Eh, we will keep on practicing. Entonces, eh, I'm going to ask you homework. A ver, dudas. Sí. Sí, Teresa. Hay mucho lío con el anything y nada, hay mucho lío con esto porque normalmente se puede poner anything hasn't, podría poner hasn't, eh, lo que pasa es que en, en inglés está mal la doble negativa cuando el anything va en esta posición, pero la gente lo dice, gente nativa quiero decir, entonces con eso hay un poco de lío, pero ponerlo así. Porque se supone que eh, negativa y negativa crean una frase positiva, es por eso el lío, pero la gente lo, lo pone. Por ejemplo, dicen, I don't want anything, y sería I don't want nothing, pero da igual, eso no os preocupéis. So, uh, it was difficult, I know. De deberes, ¿qué tenemos de deberes? Eh, a ver, uh, son muchas, no, 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 son muchas. Venga, de deberes hasta la 20, ya, just that. Entonces hacemos desde la 12... Me voy a apuntarlo. Eh, desde la 12 a la, ah, la 20 incluida. Eh, from 12 to 20, and that's it. No hacemos más de, de pasiva, solo haremos con las de... Haremos a lo mejor 5 el próximo día. Corregimos, el, a ver, el próximo día. I'm going to tell you in English. 
from 12 to 20 homework, 20 included. And then the following day in class, in class we will do some of these, not all of them. And we will do a reading or something like that, okay, from the exam, from previous exams, okay. Bueno, chicos, espero que no os haya petado la cabeza después de esta clase. Uh, it was difficult. It is difficult to get the, um, the trick, the hang of, of this, but you will, you will see that you succeed in the exam. Okay, guys, so have a nice weekend. De la 12 a la 20 y ya el resto en clase. Okay, y cualquier duda, apuntáis todas las dudas. Que solo sabéis hacer dos frases. Oye, Marta, he tenido problemas en hacer todas estas. ¿Vale? Y lo vemos en clase, eh, las corregimos una por una. ¿Vale? Chicos, bye bye. Bye, thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye, thank you. Bye. See you guys.